number 16 is one of the most notoriously difficult um, preludes. Um, and in terms of character, I always like to imagine it's somebody riding the horse um, at night um, by the very dangerous cliffs and uh, through a storm. And, uh, the le and this piece, of course, reminds us so much of uh, Chopin's uh, second sonata's opening movement. It also has a sim similar perpetual kind of rhythm. <laughs> This piece's left hand shares that same pattern. Mm. 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 And I really feel the left hand, the importance of the left hand in this piece is so important. It has the rhythmic backbone to the whole piece, but also it carries so much of the emotional or the characters. Um, and when I practice this piece, because the left hand has so many jumps um, and it's all over the place, so I always try to think um, using the momentum of this gesture so, to bring my hand back to where it needs to be next. So back to the bass. And the thumb um, should always be relaxed, not locked up. So we're using this instead of kind of um, kind of bring our hands um, arbitrarily to the next. I always use this figure, this momentum to bring the fifth finger to its base. And this is also true when it's um, in octaves. I feel like in octaves, I always try to think I'm sending the momentum to the last of this three note figure. And then it brings it back. And the elbow should always be free to move. Yes. And in regards to the right hand, um, it's treacherously um, difficult. And I would like, in terms of character, I would like to think the right hand as the howling winds. And this might be the, the horse ride, but this is the wind. Um, so I think to create the kind of um, wind kind of effect, I think the swells, the crescendo and decrescendos are so important. And we should already be practicing that when we are practicing at a slow speed. Um, for me, I always do a lot of slow practice. Um, and uh, I would like to, I think in terms of um, pure technicality, I think the fingertips um, should feel very solid and yet not with too much tension. And I feel like the fingers um, should be in the open and straight position. Um, and this piece, since the speed is so fast, I think I always try to think the fast attacks and also the fast releases of the notes. So, and then you really practice the crescendo. And I think one of the most difficult things is the hands get tired. So I think in order for it to not get tired, I always think you have to, um, only when it gets very strong, I think you put all of the weight. And when it's soft, you need to find a lot of the low points where you don't have to go. Um, and I always like to practice in group of fours to um, compute everything in the mind and to separate, separate it. And then in group of eights. And then together with the left hand.
is actually putting them back together. I always like to practice them separately, but when actually putting them back together, it's also another process to kind of put two independent voices together. Um, these two lines should be not interfering what they're doing individually. Once you hit the, that high point, it's a release. You don't have to put too much work in after that. So I think the shape of each uh, pattern is so important. For example, at places like this, this part is quite difficult because it has a lot of stretches and leaps, but essentially it's two voices coming down. So there's the this chord coming down, yet there's the scale on top. Again, I think it's useful to think um, the two sides of the hands. So there's the left and the right. I think the point of that is not to, uh, the hand doesn't get too, too tense. Yes. Chopin Preludes are some of my favorite piano works and uh, I have spent a lot of time studying the music, um, thinking about it and of course practicing and performing it. So today I'm really excited to share some of my thoughts and uh, practice tips with you on tone bass.